In this episode of Paint Society, we're going to take this damaged Acura ILX, put a new fender on it, then go over the color matching tools to ensure a blendable match, then show you how we prep for a metallic blend, bring it into the booth, the result will stun you. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where learning doesn't stop when the video ends. As you can tell, this has been hit in the front end. You can see the damage right here. So we went ahead and we got the new fender. Uh, we sealed it, we based it, we cleared it, and now we're gonna put it on. So in this video, we're gonna learn the purpose of why we need to blend, and then we're gonna show you how to do it. So first, let's go ahead and let's get that fender and let's chat about it and get it on the car. Here is that fender that we've painted. And as you can see, we have our paint all in the areas that we cannot get to once it's on the car. And instead of just leaving that paint overlapping in this area, we just went ahead and we put a coat on so we have a nice uniform substrate that we can sand down and get a nicer finish once it's on the car. So we got our fender on and this is the reason why we blend. This one color code has all these different variants in it. What I really want to teach you guys is that even though we got this color code NH797M, it does not mean that when we plug it in, we're going to get the right color. Depending on the factory it was painted in, what paint line they were using at the particular moment, how the robots were feeling at that particular day, so many factors go into a color match. Remember, there's no such thing as Acura paint. Acura does not make paint, okay? They, they reach out to different companies and whatever company or paint line that they're using in a particular moment is going to have a variance in that color. And that's why we have all those different variances. This same color code can look completely different on the same exact car on the lot. So let's discuss why we're blending this fender. Let me show you the differences in the color that we have. Now, usually you won't pick up the difference too much, but can you see how this is a little bit lighter than the hood? Let's take a look at the door. Now our door has already been scuffed with 800 grit ready for our blend, but not a problem. We can use some solvent based wax and grease remover to kind of emulate how it would look if it had clear coat on it. Now, if we look at it from the side, you can see that this is way lighter and this is a little bit darker. Check that out. So what does that tell me? Well, I can guarantee you if I took that color and blended it, you would never be able to tell that it was blended. But what did I do? I went back into my system and I kind of did some more spray out cards and I found what I see is a better match. Let's take a look. Now, if we check that out, you can see it's a little bit darker and it's gonna be a better match for the fender when we blend into the door and when we blend into the hood. So Brian, why don't you just take this color and put it on the fender and be done? Well, it might look good, but it will never be perfect unless you blend it. It is the only way in this field to ensure a quality and perfect match on any type of color, even including a black. Just to further our instruction, this is a great color tool that we have still left from Exalta. So this is what is on the fender, and then we'll take it and put it on the vehicle. Clearly here, you can see it is lighter. Now let's take our spray out that we worked on for a better match. As you can see, it's much better, but it's not perfect. Just a touch coarser, but still a blendable match. And that's very important. So Brian, does that mean you have to go and spray all the way on the inside of the jam and inside of the door? No, you're never gonna see those areas. And even from factory, they don't even really have paint on them anymore. I know it's getting a little bit rough around here with the coverage that we're getting from the factory. We've got a good color on the inside and a lot of times it doesn't even have clear. So we're good to go. This color right here, it's done, done its job. It's got us color on our inside of our jams and it's ensured that we have a nice substrate that is the same as the rest of the car that can be sanded and it's ready for our blend into our hood and ready for a blend into the door as well. And well, we might even do our sail panel on the house. So where do we go from here? Well, we're gonna focus on our hood because that's what needs to be sanded. We're gonna go ahead with our 800 grit. We're just gonna scuff the surface. That way we can put our base on in the area we wanna blend and then clear coat the whole thing. And we're gonna talk about that even more to explain what a blend is. You're gonna learn a lot soon. I'll start off by cleaning off my panel with the greaser, 
get everything completely off the panel, all the contaminants before we start sanding. Now to ensure you get the cleanest cut and you're eliminating all contamination, after it's dried, go ahead and get yourself some solvent-based wax and grease remover and clean over all the panels you're about to sand. This will also ensure that you are not sanding contaminants into the surface and it's gonna help from your sandpaper from clogging up. Next, I'll use this Polyvance bumper bag to prop up the hood so that I can sand all the leading edges easily. So when we sand this hood, we're not looking to go all the way down. All we're looking to do is to dole up the top coat. The top coat is the clear coat. And what we want to do is put our base only in the area that we're blending. So we're going to use the body line here to hide our blend and then everything else will get cleared over. Once we clear back over that 800 grit scratch, it's going to make it glossy again. So we want to make sure that we don't go too harsh and we don't burn through the paint because if we do, that means we have to put new color too close to the other panels that we're supposed to match that has the factory finish already on it. That's very important. So to do that, we're going to be using a 3.30 seconds uh, stroke DA from Astro. It is going to leave a very fine sanding scratch. And then we're going to break down all of our large surfaces with 600 and we're going to be using the interface pad. Now we'll go ahead and we'll finish with 800, but just to kind of open up that clear on our large areas, we want to cut it open with that 600 just to make it a life a little bit easier. Otherwise we'll be here all day with that 800. Make sure to wear gloves so we're not putting oil contaminants back into the surface as we sand. From this point on, everything should be clean, clean, clean. Now what we'll do is we'll attack our big areas first. I kind of like to go in strokes even and make sure that we're staying away from our body line because this is where paint is much thinner and you'll go right through it. Let's take a look at what we have just by doing that. We've stayed away from our edge, okay? and we've started to flatten out the panel. Now you can still see in areas, it's just a little bit glossy underneath. Do not worry about that. We'll get that with the 800 and then our gray scuff pad, will go into all those little low spots and scuff it up. Notice how the interface pad is kind of taking the contour and leaving a smooth edge. Okay, let's remove it and see the difference. Do you see here how it only focused on just this area and not the top surfaces? That's because it had contact only in a smaller area. Now, if we put that pad on, we're gonna have more surface contact. See along the edge now how we have all that surface contact that we couldn't get with not having the interface pad in? That's the main difference that you'll see here. See what happens when you clean the whole panel? I've only used one piece of sandpaper and this isn't the most highest grade sandpaper either. All right, so that means that I have a nice even cut Paired with the right DA, we're good to go. Now, what we'll do is we'll go over it with 800 grit. Now, 800 grit is going to go ahead and refine the scratch and get it ready for the blend. Now luckily, this is a brand new hood, well on a new car, so we don't have any chips, so we got lucky. If we did have a chip within this area, I would go ahead and fix it with some spot putty. If we had a chip over in this area, 
I'm sorry, it would get painted over because if we had to put new color right here, it would not match our fender. So that's something to keep in mind. That's just the way it goes with paint. We do our best to fix what we can within the blend area, but anything else, we're just gonna ruin our color match if we take it too far. Now we'll have the same process performed on this fender like we did on the hood. Let's take a look at what we have. You can see that we still have not hit up our edges. All the way into the corners, you can see there's just a little bit of glossiness. For that, we're gonna use a gray scuff pad and just gently go over all of our areas that have gloss. We don't wanna to rub too hard. All we wanna do is just dole up the surface so that paint can stick. Now we'll clean it using a scuff pad and scuff stuff. Not only is it gonna clean it, but this is gonna go down into any crevice that we didn't get leveled with our sandpaper, and it's gonna leave a nice and smooth finish that is ready for blending. Now we just washed it off. I want you to look at the water. It's an indicator. It indicates if we have contamination. So if it's getting caught up anywhere or kind of going around a certain area, that is a good sign that you might have some sort of contamination. See how it's nice and flat and glossy? It's not being held up anywhere. This is what we want. This is a good sign. So here we have our job and it's all prepped and it's ready to go. And the finish should look matte and even, okay? If you have any shiny spots, that means you didn't sand well enough. And now is not the time to do it. It should have already been done out there. Now, I also want to make another note. All that water we saw in a previous clip, make sure you blow that off. We don't know what chemicals are in the water as far as chlorine or whatever they put it in. And we don't want it to dry and sit on the actual panel. So blow that off, don't let it evaporate. That's a good tip that you want to follow that you probably didn't think about. So why are we blending? Well, it's pretty obvious that this fender right here does not match, okay? Now we have our better color as we indicated earlier in the video. So we're gonna blend that color into this area. Now we're gonna use this unique body line. Nowadays, most cars have unique body lines within the hood, the fenders, and elsewhere. So we're gonna blend it right here, and if we needed to, we could take it more, but we wanna try to keep it just below this area. Now on this door, our blend, our color, will come halfway, and then we'll top it off with our clear. Remember, we don't want any sort of color here, because even though we have the same color code, we know if we put color here, it's not gonna match this door. So that's very important. And on the house, since I'm a nice guy, I'm gonna go ahead and blend this eight pillar. What's more, preparing to get even cleaner, water-based cleaner. Now with our solvent base, this is gonna remove your grease, your oils from engine contaminants, that type of thing. Soak it up, and wipe, and wipe. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put down a blending additive, also known as a clear base coat. Most of paint manufacturers will sell this. So contact the paint manufacturer that you're using and ask for their blending additive or their clear base coat. We're gonna use it in two different methods. The first method is we're gonna cover all of our panels, making sure that our first coat and our second coat or whatever coats we use of our clear base does not come to the edge of our panel, so we do not darken this area. Yes, it will darken with multiple cup coats, it will darken it, and this door will not match this panel. So we're gonna use it all over the whole entire hood, fender, and partial part of the door, and this is gonna give us an e even playing field to see exactly how our color is looking, and it's gonna fill in micro fine scratches, give us a good playing field for our base coat to lie on.
Okay, students, listen to every word I'm about to say. This is what we need to do. So we're gonna contain our color. We're gonna contain it. It's not gonna go past here. Once more, it's not gonna go past this body line. It's just gonna come up our rail just a little bit. So here's method number two. We got our clear base, our blending additive. We're gonna use it now as a wet bed before we allow this to dry. We don't want it to dry now. We actually want to blend into it so the edges where it is gonna land dry at the end of the pattern have something wet to fall into so it's smooth. If it didn't have this and it only had this, okay, then we might see that edge, okay? Now, if you didn't have blending solvent, you could probably use extra slow reducer and add more reducer so you can kind of fade away that edge so it's smoother, but we got the tools, so we're gonna use them and you can get them too. Okay, it's still wet. We sprayed it on wet. We gotta get it before it dries, so we're gonna do our blending now. 14 to 15 PSI, only you can do this on the DV1, no other gun. So that first coat is flashing. Now this area is gonna to wanna to be really gritty and dry. That's why we go ahead and we use that blending additive to kind of keep it wet. Now, as you can see, we don't have full coverage yet on that first coat. It's just a touch lighter, but we'll clear it up in the next coats. The big question is how many coats do I need? Well, that really depends on your application and how well you have covered your coat. So here, it looks like we're gonna use one more coat and a half. That means we're gonna apply our coat and while it's still wet, we're gonna go right back over it with the same gun, the same settings. We're just gonna go ahead and increase our distance about 12 inches instead of our normal four to five. And we're just gonna go a little bit slower. And what that's gonna do is help put on the, the uh, metallics just a little bit more smoother. It's called a drop coat orientation, that type of thing. Um, so once we're done with that, we'll let it dry and we'll check for coverage. Now here we go again with our second and then our half coat. Still doing that clear base once again on the door and over on the hood as well as the top of the A-pillar. Let's keep that first coat right around here. Let's make that second coat a little bit more of a distance around 12 inches. All right, so you just saw the base coat. Looks absolutely phenomenal. Now it's time for clear coat. So this isn't a clear coat video, so we're not gonna get technical. So just enjoy the views from up above, and then we'll check it out when it's all done. So Diaz got the car all assembled and it's right behind me getting its final detail and boy I can't wait to show you what it looks like. I hope you guys learned something and if you want to support the channel go over to paintsociety.bigcartel.com. You can cop some merchandise and you can kind of show your friends what's going on over here at Paint Society. 
and I can really learn a lot about how to paint. So guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check it out.